Happy New Year's to everybody in the XRP community. It is Solomon here. Um, as promised, starting to put out some YouTube content for y'all. Uh, a couple of disclaimers. First off, I will be getting a mic. I'm expecting it in within the next day or two. So if you hear popping or nonsense in my uh, in my voice, that should be um, remedied here very shortly. So I wanted to get a little bit into some of the things that I saw coming out today about identity. Um, I've done some research on them. Uh, there's quite a bit to go into here, but I'll try to keep this video short, under 10 minutes. Um, so I know I saw XRP uh, or Darren uh, post today about R3 and uh, identity in the core DAP trial with 300 banks. And I know I posted a comment underneath his uh, regarding kind of just some of the stuff and how, how identity is tied into Ripple in the past. So I thought I would just provide a brief overview. And just as a heads up, I'll provide uh, every link that I go through on here. Um, I'll provide when I share this to Twitter. I'll make sure that you guys have all these all the same information here. So, I mean, you guys obviously saw from me today the same identity that filed a patent to settle XRP over Swift messages, uh, which I believe is their overlay platform, um, and the same identity that partnered with Trace Financial and Swift to update the messages for ISO 20022022. Uh, so, just touching base on that, I guess we'll go right into the uh, the Trace Financial document uh, that this came out. Well, this was in April of this year. So identity partners with Trace Financial to simplify new financial messaging standards, migration for SWIFT member banks. Uh, a product partnership with a joint focus on sales and marketing provides the opportunity for identity to sell its proprietary overlay plus platform into new markets. Um, really kind of the key takeaway here. Uh, the product partnership involves the integration of Trace Financial's established message translation software, Transformer, with Identity's innovation overlay platform, Overlay Plus, which, as you'll see throughout this video, uh, ties, into, um, ties into Ripple to simplify the migration to new ISO 20022 financial message standards for financial business transactions. Um, a go to market strategy will target SWIFT member banks looking to reduce significant costs of converting their existing payments technology systems to comply with ISO 20022. Easier, more secure, and cost effective migration solution for banks. So it's basically just a like it, I mean, it's a perfect name for it overlay. I mean, it's it's basically going to allow um, all these legacy institutions to have an in or a quicker and easier easier and cheaper way to um, comply with the new ISO standards that are coming out here. And I guess just right off the bat, how this ties in with Ripple, um, I think I have this in here. So FinTech Innovation Lab, uh, Asia Pacific FinTech Innovation Lab came out with this. Um, I'm not exactly sure what the FinTech Innovation Lab is in Asia, the Asia Pacific region, but um, I mean, there's a shit ton of companies on here. Um, but you get down into, and I haven't really looked into most of these, but you get down into identity here. Uh, you have to click on it to get the full description, but identity, this, I think this document came out in 2016 or 17. Um, and just to highlight this here, the goal 15, sorry, the goal of this simple, fast and secure payment network from Australia is to make a cross border payment as easy as a domestic payment built on the ripple protocol it is designed to support low value high volume cross-border payments and reduce bank processing costs <clears throat> i'm not sure what sparo is here sparo's products are quickly deployable cloud hosted and provided blah 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 so but we can see that there's obviously a huge tie-in with ripple just based on that alone and if that's not enough um you know, you get into a little bit more of a deeper dive here with, I think the identity CEO is named, I think it's Nick, is it Nick Armstrong? Hold on a second. Yeah, Nick Armstrong is identity's um, CEO here. And this is the patent <clears throat> that I brought up uh, today. 
So, I mean, it's still pending approval, I mean, as far as the patent status goes, but, you know, just to kind of see how it paints a picture of how really a lot of the things with FinTech and DLT, and I don't want to say everything because that wouldn't be true, but a lot can generally be traced back to or somehow connected to Ripple in some way. Um, and the really good funds are the ones that don't just connect to Ripple, but directly connect to XRP. Um, and, you know, this one does mention um, mention Ripple quite a bit. So the, the patent is uh, computer implemented method for processing a financial transaction and a system thereof. And I will post this link also. But this whole patent talks about um, using the legacy Swift uh, messaging system and format, but still having almost like an overlay overlay plus that would um, enable the uh, facilitation for a digital asset or a token to settle over top of those um, those rails so just to read briefly about this and then I'll go into a couple of um, uh, highlights here where it does talk about ripple and XRP but a computer implemented method for processing a financial transaction includes the steps of transmitting one or more documents pertaining to the financial transaction from a first intermediary server to a first document store, generating an enriched data record from the one or more documents. At the first intermediary server and adding the enriched data record into a blockchain, from the first intermediary server, requesting generation of a token corresponding to the financial transaction to a token server from the first inter intermediary server via a messaging bus, generating the token at the token server and adding the token into the blockchain from the token server. Uh, great, it's a lot of mumbo jumbo that I don't feel like getting into, but um, you go into here, um, settlement gateway of payers banks send, uh, sends by way of non-limiting limiting example, XRP, the native currency of Ripple, great. Really the thing that stuck out to me here um, was, I hope I can find it. Kind of this statement here in the patent. This goes into a whole spiel about um, how everything's going to work. And, you know, if you just type in Ripple in this document, you get a ton of hits. But the biggest hit that, and the biggest takeaway that I had from this is that, you know, they're talking about preferably the, the settlement mechanism used is via utilization of the Ripple protocol. We already saw one document that says that um, identity does run on the Ripple protocol, um, but now we have this here in the patent as well. Um, there are also some pretty interesting videos here. I'll play this one real quick. I hope I'm not gonna run over 10 minutes, but this is, this is and if I don't have sound, I apologize, guys. I'm still trying to get used to this OBS software thing. But this is HSBC Australia. Um, this is HSBC with KPMG. And KPMG, we know, has mentioned Ripple quite a bit. I believe they might be a Ripple partner, but I'm not positive. And Identity CEO Nick Armstrong, who is also pretty much the author of the patent, if I remember correctly. Yeah, Nick Armstrong right here. So we have H HSBC. And the, the interesting thing that I saw in this, and this is even from a few months ago, um, was the I think it was like four or five second settlement. Now we know that X Rapid doesn't settle in four to five seconds. Obviously, an XRP transaction goes through in four to five seconds, but there's still so much back end and front end nonsense that goes on. Um, at least from my understanding, um, that would really mean that an that, that an XRP transaction is like a minute and a half or two minutes um, from from two institutions. I may be wrong about that, but that's my understanding. Um, I will play this video and I will leave you guys with this. And um, again, I plan on doing some live streams, um, plan on doing a little bit more community engagement with you guys uh, and girls and ladies and men and everybody who's in, involved in this community. And, uh, you know, it's been a pleasure being, uh, being involved over the past year or so, and I plan on continuing to do so. And hopefully uh, I can put out some video content that uh, is informative and like a like I said, when I post this to, to Twitter, I'll, I'll have all the links. If I find anything else, I'll add it to it. So I'll leave you guys with this.
key thing that open banking has been driving is APIs, so application programming interfaces, which really is about extending the corporate channel of the bank to enable more of this transactional data to be collected and then exchanged with other parties. Using new technology to enable effectively an overlay on top of the existing payment infrastructure to enable really rich information to be shared. One that we're quite passionate about is enhanced remittance information. Being able to give you a consolidated view in real time across all of your different banking relationships delivered through a dashboard or portal. And that data aggregation and visualisation through our existing channels in HSBC Net is really our day one focus. And with the real time payments projects that are going on globally within the HSBC Net organisation. That convergence of real time. I don't think we've seen um, 100% clarification that HSBC is a Ripple partner yet. However, there there have been documents, obviously, where HSBC has mentioned Ripple. Uh, and I know that I've seen a couple of uh, different individuals state that Deutsche Bank actually confirmed that. But With open banking, I think that the longer term vision that we see is the ability to initiate a payment or even request a payment cross border that can be settled in less than, say, three or four seconds. It's got all of the rich information associated with it, and that can be. border that can be settled in less than say three or four seconds that's got all of the rich information associated with it and that can be multi-bank so you can go to a domestic bank in the US request money based on a mandate that's been set up and that will be delivered into your account in close to real time. Even though it's mandated for consumers, uh, that doesn't stop corporates from getting involved in open banking so you can actually go over and above what's mandated. I'd really encourage you to think about in, in your particular businesses and in your industries, what is the value of the data you have? I think a really useful exercise is to take a step back and think about how could you be working with your bank? What problems could you solve for your customers, for your businesses? All right, guys, till next time.